So, how do we measure pressure? Well, the first type of measurement is called a barometer, okay? And we use this to measure the absolute pressure of the atmosphere, okay? And essentially what we've got is we've got this instrument and uh, we have a column of uh, mercury. We use mercury because it's quite a lot heavier than water, okay? And uh, that's inverted onto uh, like a, a plate of mercury as well. Um, and we fill the, the column of mercury such that um, there's no air left in it, okay? And what happens when we invert that column of mercury is that we have atmospheric pressure um, <coughs> pressing down, pressing down on that plate, okay? You've got atmospheric pressure here. And then you've got the weight of the mercury also acting on that plate of mercury, okay? There's a vacuum up here, so it's, it's not going to try and, uh, you know, the weight of the mercury is such that that creates that vacuum, okay? And so we can measure this height here, and this height will enable us to determine what the atmospheric pressure is, okay? Because essentially, the greater the atmospheric pressure, the more pressure, you know, the more mercury will be required to equalize that pressure. As we said, all pressures at the same horizontal level are, the, you know, should be, are equal, okay? And so this P equals the atmospheric pressure. Okay, so the pressures, as I said, horizontal plane is equal. So the mercury will rise up until the pressure, due to the weight, will balance the atmospheric pressure. Okay, so that's what's done. Okay, and so we end up with an equation that P equals the pressure here, P equals the atmospheric pressure. Okay, and obviously we know the hydrostatic pressure, P equals rho GH. Now here we've got rho is obviously going to be the density of mercury, which is 13,600 kilograms per Obviously, G is the same. And HB, notice this is different from HP. HP being the pressure head. Here we're talking about the bar barometric head. Okay? So rho GH, so you can measure this distance here. Add it to this equation, we'll get P. Now, for obviously, this is how they worked out atmospheric pressure. And obviously, pressure varies um, you know, in terms of weather. You, know, you may have seen the barometer, and it will show you what the weather's doing, and whether it's fair or stormy or rainy, all this sort of stuff. Well, essentially, what that thing's doing is measuring the pressure and it's been matched to what you know, the, the atmospheric pressure shows you know, in terms of the weather. Okay? And so, as I said, HB is the barometric head and obviously d uh, the rho is the density of mercury, which is 13,600. So, what about this, this form of pressure measurement? It's called a piezometer tube. And we use this to measure the liquid pressure, okay? So, we've got, again, we've got an instrument. Basically, we've got this, uh, this uh, sort of ball that's filled with liquid, and it's got a little exit tube at the top. And if you fill this liquid up to here, okay, we, we know that there's going to be some pressure being applied right in the middle of this ball. Okay, so we, let's say we want to work out what the pressure is right in the middle. And it's the same sort of thing going on here. Okay, pressure in the middle. Well, we know we've got um, hydrostatic pressure. We know that equation is P equals rho GH. Now, that's going to be the gauge pressure because we've got, essentially, we've got the weight of the fluid above it. Okay, that's being applied here. And we've also got the atmospheric pressure being applied, okay? So if we measure the pressure right in the middle, it's just going to be this, okay? That, and obviously, when, if there was no liquid above it, then it would read zero, because it's the gauge pressure, yeah? But in fact, the absolute pressure is obviously the weight of the liquid plus the atmospheric pressure, because the atmospheric pressure is also being applied <coughs> to that point, okay? So you've got gauge pressure, which is just rho GH, and then to get, work out the atmospheric pressure, we just add, uh, sorry, the absolute pressure, we just add the atmospheric pressure. Okay. So this is how we measure pressure in a liquid. What about a gas? Well, with a gas we use what's called a U-tube manometer, okay? Of which you've got a picture in your book. And so here we've got another ball filled with some gas, okay? Now, obviously, if this is just like the other, the other sort of measurement device, you know, if we put a gas inside this 
instrument, obviously the gas is just going to escape, yeah? So we need something between what's the gas in here and the gas from the atmosphere, because you don't, you don't want to, the thing to escape. So we use what's called a, a U-tube manometer. Okay? <clears throat> so we've got gas in here, and then between these two, between the gas inside the ball and the atmospheric you know, air, or ga the gas outside, We've put, we've put a liquid of some description, okay? That could be water, it could be mercury, it could be, you know, whatever, whatever liquid we want to use. Obviously, a liquid that doesn't dissolve that gas would be helpful, okay? Um, so we use a liquid in there, that, and that causes a boundary between the atmospheric pressure and the pressure in the, in the gas pressure here, okay? Well, how do we work out what the pressure is? Well, we've got this um, thing, H. We can measure the height difference. Obviously, if, if the gas here was the same as the atmospheric pressure then the height would be zero, okay? The height difference would be zero. You've got a pressure being applied by the atmosphere and a pressure being applied by the gas. Well, then there'll be no H, okay? So the, we know that the, uh, the pressure of the gas is the same as atmospheric pressure. Now, in this case, obviously, there is a, there is a difference. And you can look, just by looking at it, you know that the gas pressure is higher than atmospheric pressure, yeah? And so when you've got the gas pressure, P, is greater than the atmospheric pressure, <laughs> We've got this H, um, HP term that's come out. And obviously, again, we use the hydrostatic equation and we get the gauge pressure is rho times G times HP. Okay? As I said, when HP is zero, we say, well, the, the gauge pressure is also zero. Yeah? But obviously, we're talking about absolute pressure. You've got to add atmospheric pressure. So you just add atmospheric pressure on. You get the absolute pressure of the, uh, of the, um, of the gas inside this ball. And so again, <laughs> HP is the pressure head measured in metres. Now what about if, if the pressure inside here is less than the atmospheric pressure? Well, what you have is this, that HP goes the other way around. Okay? Obviously, there's, there's a greater pressure being applied here, so it pushes the liquid down, which in turn pushes the liquid up because the pressure in the ball is less than atmospheric pressure. Okay? And so to work out what the pressure is in that case, we've got minus rho, a, rho gh, okay? Because um, gauge pressure, as we said, is zero when you've got atmospheric pressure. And so when it's less than atmospheric pressure, it's obviously a negative pressure, okay? So it's negative rho gh. And obviously at absolute pressure is you just add on <coughs> atmospheric pressure, okay? And so you've got uh, atmospheric pressure minus rho gh will give us the absolute pressure of the gas in that uh, ball. And again, HP is the vacuum head. Okay, so today we've covered density, okay, which is the, uh, signified by the Greek letter of rho, okay, which is this curly sort of P-type shape. Um, density is mass per unit volume, okay? So kilograms per meter squared. Pressure, okay? Pressure is the next thing we covered. And we know that pressure is the force divided by the area, okay? So newtons per meter squared or pascals, okay? So these are some sort of fundamental things that you'll need to understand. Hydrostatic pressure, which is a certain type of pressure associated with the weight of the fluid that we're measuring, is rho times g times h, okay? Sorry. Where h is the um, pressure head, okay? And given to you in meters or millimeters. And so we've determined the atmospheric pressure. We know on average it's about 101,300 newtons per meter squared or around one bar, okay? Um, often you'll be asked to find it as we've just done so in question six here. The measurement of the atmospheric pressure, well, that's, that was determined by a barometer, okay, which is that tube of mercury that's inverted onto a plate of mercury, okay, and the height that's given, the barometric head, Hb, um, you plug it into the hydrostatic pressure equation and you end up getting the atmospheric pressure, okay. When we want to measure liquid pressure, we use a piezometer, okay, which is the, uh, the ball with the tube sticking out the top. Okay, and you fill it up with liquid, and then the measurement of the pressure in the middle of the ball is, uh, is uh, the height 
and you plug that into the hydrostatic pressure equation. And then we've got the gas pressure, which is the U-tube manometer, okay? which is the example we did here, where you've got a ball of gas, you've got a U-tube shaped thing with a liquid inside it, and the difference in the height, the height differential in the <coughs> liquid will give us the H value that you stick into your hydrostatic pressure equation. Okay, and so the tutorials, the, the exercises on, the page, on pages 10 to 12 are the ones to have a go at in your own time. If you've got problems, come to the tutorials. Thank you very much. <laughs>